he i mean he went before god and said i was totally wrong i was totally wrong he said god deal with me and god dealt with him and david was saved so my dear accept responsibility stop blaming people St stop that that a person did this and that is the reason why i did it i acted that way because of you you are always blaming others this is not life that's the same thing that happened in the garden of eden instead of adam taking responsibility he said it was the wife that you gave me it was the No, when prophet Nathan confronted David about his infidelity with Bathsheba and David accepted his responsibility and asked God to help him and asked God to forgive him, it was such a powerful scene. There is something so profound about taking responsibility for your actions, taking responsibility for your own choices, taking responsibility for your life. Taking responsibility for the things that are going on in your life. There is something so powerful about that. So today, I just want you to analyze your life. And take responsibility for the things that are going on in your life. Accept that you didn't do right. Accept that you made the wrong choice. Accept that you did it your own way. And that is why it has landed you in that situation. It's something so powerful about accepting your mistakes, accepting your fault, taking responsibility for your actions, and then asking God for help. Because when you are able to take that step, okay, by accepting responsibility, knowing that I was wrong, I didn't make the right choice, I didn't speak well, I didn't treat my husband or my wife well, I, I didn't do what was right. When you accept that, then you ask God to help you so that next time you can make right choices. So my dear, just look at your life. Stop blaming people. Okay, stop blaming people and shifting blame. Every, everybody around, there is something wrong with everybody around you except you. There is something wrong with everybody. You are always saying, I did it because of what this person did. Accept it that your temperament level is bad and you need to do something about your anger. Okay, people normally expose what is inside of us. Because I believe that situations reveal ourselves to ourselves. Okay, situations, they reveal ourselves to ourselves. Sometimes you don't know what is inside of you until you are confronted with a challenge. Sometimes you don't know what is inside of you until somebody irritates you. Then the way you respond will tell you more about yourself than about what happened or about the person. So instead of you accepting your mistakes and accepting your faults and saying that, Father, I take responsibility for it. I mean, something small and it irritates me. And I think that I have a problem with my, with my temperament and I need your help. Then God will come through for you when you take responsibility and will help you. The same thing that David did. He, I mean, he went before God and said, I was totally wrong. I was totally wrong. He said, God, deal with me. And God dealt with him. And David was saved. So my dear, accept responsibility. Stop blaming people. Stop that, that a person did this and that is the reason why I did it. I acted that way because of you. You are always blaming others. This is not life. That's the same thing that happened in the Garden of Eden. Instead of Adam taking responsibility, he said, it was the wife that you gave me. It was the wife that you gave me. But when the wife said that, take this fruit and eat, why didn't you tell him that? God told me because God gave me the instruction. God told me not to eat it. Instead of him accepting his responsibility, he started blaming God, the woman that you gave me. If you want to grow, if you want to mature spiritually, learn to take responsibility for your actions, learn to take responsibility for your weaknesses, learn to take responsibility for your wrong choices. When you do that, then God will come in and help you so that you can be all that God has destined you to be. Sometimes your life may seem like it's on a downward trajectory and giving up is the only option and you may think that there is no need for me to keep going there is no need for me to get to the finish line there is no way that i will come out stronger but i want to encourage you that if you keep on moving if you keep on going if you don't allow the thorn in your flesh to put you down your faith that you have in god and you have in yourself and you have in your dream will pay off so i don't know maybe things are not going the way that you want them to be 
or you are not getting um, the things that you were expecting to happen in your life. Maybe things are going on downwards and you think that, well, I don't think that something good will definitely come out of this project that I am embarking on or the thing that I am doing maybe in your marriage, in your finances, in relation with your kids and then in life. And things may be messed up, but I want you to know that when you press on, even when you cry, press on. Even when you, 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 you don't know what to do, hop your way to victory. Okay? Don't allow what you are seeing to tell you otherwise. Don't let what you are seeing tell you that that dream will not come to pass. That dream will definitely come to pass. You know, life, everything that is worth fighting for, there are pain associated with it. Pain and joy, they go in tandem. You get it? They go hand in hand. They work together. It's like Ozimoran. Bitter and sweet. That is how life is. Everything that you desire to get, there is some form of pain in it. Some form of crushing. Some form of um, breaking. Some form of disappointment. When you want a successful relationship, there is pain associated with love. You cannot love without pain. You cannot give birth without pain. You cannot have that business established without pain, without disappointment, without betrayal. It's part of life. When you get to understand that, it helps you to know that, well, I know that I want this bad enough. That is why I am facing this disappointment. But I will not allow the disappointment to be so big that I will forget the blessing. Because I believe that when you focus on the blessing, when you know that something good is out there, something good is waiting for me there, it empowers you, it encourages you to keep on moving. So I want to encourage you with this video that maybe it seems like your life is on a downward trajectory, but it will not always be like that. This too shall pass. It will, it will, it will be the kind of life that you have always desired because God has given you a promise that he will give you the desires of your heart and he delight in the prosperity of his children. So my dear, don't you ever give up. When you fall down, get up. When you get insult, disappointment, pain, betrayals, all of them, cry your way to victory. Hope your way to victory. Hope your way to the finish line. Whatever that happens, say, Father, I am not going to give up on that dream. This business, I'm not going to give up on this business because I believe that whatever that you have said concerning this business will definitely come to pass. A lady called me and said, Sister Akosia, I want to leave my job. And I said, why do you want to leave your job? And she said, because the gossip is too much. I can't take it anymore. I want to get out. And I said, my dear, why? Why are you running away from your problems? Why are you running away from your challenges? You need to confront them. You are above gossips. Okay? You are above the opinions of people. Build your emotional muscles, emotional intelligence, so that you'll be able to stand. Unless you feel in your heart that the Holy Spirit is telling you to leave, if it is not that reason, but it is because somebody is gossiping about you. Then you want to leave your job, you want to leave your assignment, you want to leave your ministry because of a mere gossip, because of a comment by somebody who is not a repository of wisdom, by somebody who cannot even fathom his or her own life, because of a comment. God called you and created you to dominate your environment. You have to dominate, you have to come above that gossip because you are bigger than that gossip. You are bigger than the opinions of people. Don't allow that. You see, when David met Goliath, David ran to Goliath. He didn't run away from his challenges. He didn't run away from his problems. If you are in a situation where you think that it's so hard, remember that you are made for it. What is inside of you is greater than whatever is trying to come against you. The one who lives in you is greater than the one who lives in the world. Don't leave that marriage. Don't leave that office. Don't leave that job or enterprise because of a challenge. Because God knew that you will go through that challenges. And he has already equipped you for it. He is going to use that challenge to equip you. To refine you. To prune you. So don't get out of the office because of a mere gossip. God wants you to stand above it. God wants you to be emotionally mature. He wants you to be spiritually mature. God wants you to renew your mind with the word of God. So that no matter what you say, no matter the comment, the opinions of people, you will not be dominated by it. It will not intimidate you, but you continue to move forward in spite of the gossip. You continue to move forward in, in spite of their negativity. You continue to move forward in spite of the opposition. My dear, 
you are bigger and greater and above that. You are here to dominate your environment, to dominate the comments and the opinions of people. Don't leave your marriage because of what people will say. And so what? Let them talk. No matter what you do, people will talk. Give them something tangible to talk about. Don't leave that relationship because of what people will say or what people will think. Unless you believe in your heart that it's time for you to leave. It's time for you to leave that enterprise. But if you are leaving and it is motivated by the comment and the opinions of people, who are they? Who are those people who are talking? Let them talk and continue to work. They will see you one day and they will laugh at the wrong side of their teeth. My dear, stay and fight because you are made for every, every battle that will come your way. Confront it. Confront it. Go ahead. Stay. Work. Smile. Dress good. Look good. Okay? Do whatever that God has put on your heart to do. No matter what they will say. And then later on, they will look at you and the same things, the same thing that they were saying about you, they will turn back and see a different thing. Don't let them conquer you. Don't let them have their way. Don't let them win. You are supposed to win by coming above it, by being stronger and being able to dominate your environment. So my dear, don't leave that job unless you believe in your heart that God wants you to leave. Let them talk. Let them gossip. Continue to work. Continue to expand. Continue to hone your skills. Continue to master your game. Continue to master your skills. Stand above it because you are above it. God is fighting for you. God is with you. God is in that battle with you. And all the things that they are saying, as I said, they will laugh at the wrong side of their teeth. Those who are making mockery of you, those who are gossiping, their words will come back and eat them alive. But you will continue to excel because you have made the Lord God Almighty your foundation. In him you live and move and have your being. If that this pandemic, whether it was from the evil one, whether it is a test, whatever that it is, we don't know. But I believe that it has exposed the foundation of our lives as individuals, as families, and also as society and also um, the universe as a whole. And it's, it's, it is exposing us and it is also helping us to reveal to us what is important to us. And we can decide to focus on the virus and be miserable and pathetic. Or we can decide to look at the other side of the pain and ask God, what can I learn from this season? What can I learn from this um, period? And is there anything that I'm doing? Is there anything that is an idol in my life? that has taken your place we can take the opportunity to do that and as i said it depends on how you are looking at it you, you know today is easter friday more than two thousand years ago jesus said on the cross it is finished the power of sin was broken the king of glory he conquered it all and we have opportunity to enter into the finishing works of jesus christ he said, it is finished. You are no more under the bondage of sin anymore. If you come to me, I will set you free. I will set you free from lust. I will set you free from addiction. I will set you free from depression and anxiety. I will set you free from fear. Fear that is reigning. The fear of the evil one. The fear of the future. The fear of something bad happening to you, I will set you free because it is finished. I did it all for you. I left my kingdom and came down here and took upon myself everything that you have done, every sin that you have committed so that you will be free. So that you don't have to bear the consequences of your sins anymore. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It is a gift from God. Salvation, it's a gift. And we, we receive it through faith. It's the, it is the grace of God. It is not anything that we have done. It is what Jesus did on the cross. He did it all and he said, it is finished. My dear, today I want you to know that it is finished. Jesus has done it. Receive it. And walk in that revelation. Receive this gift of salvation. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to work for it. All that you have to do is to receive it. And then the salvation, the grace of God will empower you to do everything that God wants you to do. You don't have to struggle anymore.
you don't have to allow anxiety and depression to have their way today is easter friday remember what he did on the cross for you the redemptive blood of jesus christ the redemption he has set you free you don't have to allow anything to keep you under bondage last must not, must not keep you under bondage satan is under your feet that is where he belongs all that you have to do is jesus i accept you as the lord of my life come and reign in my life and have your way it is no more my way anymore i want your way i want to do things the way you want me to do it i don't want to do things my own way again you are now the lord of my life order my steps and then he will strengthen you to do everything that he has commanded you to do you know satan is legalistic but jesus is not legalistic jesus when he comes into your life he helps you he empowers you and then he gives you the grace. he is so merciful his love and kindness is awesome he will strengthen you and he will help you so that you will be all that god created you to be in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth you know when you read the book of genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our own image so that he would dominate because we sin that power was taken from us and satan took it but jesus came and gave it back to us my dear how can you afford to live this life without jesus how can you possibly know jesus and say that i don't want him then you don't know him because when you have him he will give you the power the ability to be all that God created you to be. God has a destiny for your life. God has a plan for your life. God loves you unconditionally. And he wants to help you. And he has shown his love on the cross. When Jesus said, it is finished. I have conquered Satan. I have conquered all his tactics and his plans. Now receive it. And let me help you. So that you can be all that God wants you to be. It's a powerful, the salvation message is powerful. It's awesome. The best, that's why we call it the good news. We call it the good news. There is no news like that. It is good. So my dear, today Jesus said it is finished. Anxiety, depression, poverty, lack, all of them, fear, it is finished. He has conquered it all. The king of glory won everything for you. So receive it and walk in it. Accept him as the Lord of your life and he will order your steps into your victory don't settle for less say to yourself i will never settle for less i will never ever settle for less whatever that jesus died to give me i will allow the holy spirit to teach me and help me to know the truth so that i will hold on to it and i will not let it go everything that jesus did on the cross was for me and i'm not going to settle for less I am not going to settle for less. I am going to find out. I'm going to dig deeper and deeper into the word of God. So that the things that have been freely given to me by God, the Holy Spirit will reveal them to me. And I will not allow the enemy to deceive me. I'm not going to believe any lie again. But I will allow the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, to reveal the truth of God's word to me. So that I will know my inheritance.